Joe presents Liquid Football, sponsored by Paddy Power. Hello, welcome to Liquid Football on Joe, together with Paddy Power. It's the show that takes you inside the dressing room and puts you in the boots of the players. With me this week, John Walters and Steve Sidwell. Normally we'd ask how both your weeks went, but... John, <laughs> what's been happening? <laughs> <laughs> straight in. Oh, straight in. Oh, straight in off the bat. Um, well, I've got yeah, some air time again. Yeah. Here we go. Just got hammered this week, didn't I? He's gone for you, hasn't he? Yeah. I think uh, we've had a few shows. I've, haven't we? We've done a few stories and you know, I just get asked something, I just tell the truth. So, you know, I think that's that's got to him a little bit and he's uh, he's had a little nibble back. Um more than a nibble. More than a nibble, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think, you know, I can take football th- the side of it. I can take how long his medals and all that. It doesn't, really doesn't bother me. I'll tell you one thing about the man. He, he doesn't he doesn't get to me one bit, I think. As a, as a player, I think that's what bothers him most. Maybe that I'm possibly the only one that's stood up to him more than once. And I think that might get to him. I don't know. You'd have to ask him that question, but you might get something back. But... I think the other stuff is a little bit, it's a bit close to the bone. Um, and I, I really don't know why, I said this the other day, I don't know why people pay attention, why, why they get that worried off off Roy. Because, yes, he was a good player, an unbelievable player, mm. um, known as a hard man on the pitch, but there's a difference between being a hard man on the pitch and being a tough guy. And just because someone has a sharp tongue or, or a stare, doesn't make them a tough guy. Um, my brother's a brother-in-law's a marine. What was a marine commando? Went to war. He's a tough guy. Yeah, do you know what I mean? That's yeah, the, yeah. the people you say are tough guys. Not 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 Roy. So that doesn't. That's why I've never. I'm never. I was never scared as a player. Never. When you have bullies, I try and bully you. I always do the right thing and, and stick up to it. And uh, you know what he went into the the stuff I cried on TV and that. That I think that was something that I never expected. I think I didn't, in, it, what I came from, I did an interview with Henry Winter two years ago and he caught me by surprise. He asked me about my mum, which I'd never spoke about, not even my family, not even my, my wife and my kids. It was almost like a taboo subject and always has been. Um, and I went into it and I broke down. I went mm. and he wanted to stop at Henry. I was a photographer there and I was like, just don't take any photos. And, and you know, and I went into everything. I went into my career, mistakes I've made. I went into everything I went through. Um, and he, he offered to t- not publish it, not take it out. But I said, no, go ahead of it because just see what, what comes of it. And I was nervous about it. It came out. And on the back of that, um, the amount of people that got in touch through Twitter and Instagram and people in the street. and well, That you helped. Yeah, and it was, it, it was, yeah, just saying you helped. But it was so much, the, it was the messages, it was the content of some of the messages. It's hard enough to get them back to people, and I haven't got back to everyone. It's hard to on on message requests that comes through on your on your Twitter and Instagram, and it was a case of people that what they went into. They had lost children recently, mm. lost parents, and they were lower than low, lower than a snake's belly. You know, and they're talking about things that they were contemplating, and the fact that I'd spoken out had helped them speak to someone and really helped them. So it hit, it hit a chord with me that you know when you have a platform, you can speak about it. And then last year, when I was retiring, I had a terrible injury, uh, ruptured my Achilles and it finished me off. But I knew early on what was happening with it. And then I went to the Late Late Show in Dublin, invited me on. And no one knew the year it had. Only my wife knew, um, really, to the extent of the year we both had. And it was a case of I lost my brother. I went to pre-season to Cork. I lost my brother. Um, I flew back over to England, met my other brother and sister, flew back to Cork to play in a pre-season game because um, I just wanted to carry on with it. Wife lost the baby the same day, the day after. It was the same day or the day after. Um, and then my daughter was diagnosed with scoliosis, which is, you're talking about operations, and it was a, as a 14-year-old girl, it's not nice. So that hit me hard. I carried on in football, and then I ruptured my Achilles. So I took it as... What's meant to be is meant to be. I went to whip switch and ruptured my Achilles. I was meant to be at home and didn't really bother me actually what happened with my Achilles. I had been through that much in a year that no one knew of. So I went on a late, late show and talked about it. And I went to my wife just before I went on, are you okay? We're going to this. And she was fine. Uh, 
but I couldn't get my words out. I was okay speaking to her about it because we knew, like, we both knew. But to go and tell everyone else, I didn't want to do it. But it was just the fact that how much people helped in the first place. Uh, mental health's a massive issue now. Um, I think suicide's the biggest killer of men, isn't it? And the people that got in touch with me in the first place, that made me want to say, look, footballers were humans. This happens to us just because yeah, I'm no different to anyone else. Yeah. Um, bad things happen to people every day. If I can speak about it and get it out there, then everyone else can. And, you know, my brother passed away and a big part of him passing away was mental health from a young age. Um, partly to do with mum passing away and that was a big reason he was why he was in the end. And, you know, to go there, that was... He meant it or not, probably did. It, it just it doesn't bother me. For him, he doesn't bother me. I think it just shows a side of him that probably I know. Um, there's other things that he said. <laughs> and it was going back to the first story and when I was when I was in Ipswich, um, the first story, I didn't... It was the first show we did and I don't, you know, you do all the programs you're not too sure how much you can go into things how much you want to say and I didn't really tell the story properly but I'll go over it again and it was to do with it was in Ipswich when I was going to leave and I went in the office and I, I'd been asking to leave because the Premier League club came in for me or two Premier League clubs in every window they'd come in and I was 26, 27 thought I'd never get the chance again so I went in the office and I'd asked him a couple of weeks before and he said look if a Premier League comes, club comes in for you you can go no problem so they knocked again. Can I go? Because I knew people had put bids in. You're not meant to know, but I knew. And he sat down and then he, as he does, he switched and he just said, uh, I'll tell you when you can go, basically. When they meet our valuation, I had a little pop and I just told him to fuck off. And uh, once again, the stare came out, narrowed their eyes and just said, who do you think you're speaking to? And I just, because I'd lost my head at the time, and I just said, I'm speaking to you. So he got up, took his watch off, took his jumper off. Um, and for that, you don't know, basically, you're, you're going to be fighting if, if you take your watch and jumper off. It, so we've gone head to head. And this Even is, I would get that. This is, char <laughs> this is, yeah, this is, char this is childish, <laughs> like head to head. And this was 10 years ago, whatever. So, you know, it's not me now, but. Because I don't like bullies and um, the way it's gone, I'd stand up to them. So I was like, come on then, let's have, let's have a fight. If you want to go for it, let's go. Hit me, hit me, you hit me, gone back and forth a bit. I said, look, I said, you're a bully. You, bully. you bully everyone in the club, you bully the staff, you bully the players. I'm not scared of you. You want to bully <coughs> them, bully them, but I'm not scared of you. So let's have it, me and you. Head to head, and he's gone, hit me. I'm saying, you hit me. And then it sort of wasn't happening. So I've just gone to walk out the room. And as I've gone to walk out, he said something very personal and something that's nothing to do with him. But he's touched the nerve at me. So I've, so I've shut the door behind me and come back in. And I said, basically that, it's got nothing to do with you. Come on then, let's have it. Hit me first and watch what happens to you. Um, just give me the chance to, and I'll, basically I'll rip your head off. That's what I was saying to him. But I'd gone by then, uh, I'd switched. And... Uh, once again, back and forth for a couple of minutes. And then he says to me, you're not going to hit me because I'll have you arrested if you hit me. So when you had him then, when you stand up to like mm. a bully, you knew you had, I'll have you arrested if you hit me in this workplace. So I said, okay then, well, I'll, I'll go meet you outside somewhere. Um, call me tonight and I'll come and meet you. And he's come back with, oh, you're going to meet me in the middle of a field with your mates and ambush me. <laughs> so I said, no, I'll come to your house. I'll come to your house. And while all your family there, whoever else... Me and you, I'm on my own, don't care, I'll meet you there. And uh, I've walked out. So I've gone and trained, told I could leave the club, driving by on the way home. Did that come as a surprise to you? No, no, <laughs> but driving on the way home, I'm driving at my agent, Paul Warhurst, he's, he's drove home and uh, I'm telling him the story and then Roy rings him, doesn't know I'm in the car and says, uh, are you John Waters' agent? And he's gone, yes. He's, he's on loudspeaker in the car. He's on loudspeaker and he's gone, oh. tell your client, if he says anything about me, I'll sue him for everything he's got. 
so we're just like giggling away to ourselves and he hangs up the phone so then I've gone to meet other clubs because he gave me permission to speak so I've gone to speak to Stoke and a couple of days later uh, a fine come through the post of two weeks wages and the fine the fine says um, I've still got the letter the fine says um, you know after our meeting in our office a finally unacceptable um, y- you threaten to carry out physical violence outside a club premises um, if there was witnesses I'd, I'd look to, to take criminal proceedings or civil proceedings against you here's your two weeks wages you've got the right to appeal seven days signed Roy Keane but at the end of the that's what made me laugh at the end of the interview we did the other day he said to everyone yeah John threatened to come to my house and uh, I gave me an address and I'm still waiting I just thought why are you lying don't lie that's what that's yeah. what so no I got to him got got in his head and that's what I don't mind the other things low come to the bullet, but don't lie don't lie about things like that I don't I don't claim to be a tough guy I just stand up to people that try and try and bully people and do what's right so there's been there's been you and, and Roy Keane in the news this week mm-hmm. the other row that's been going on <laughs> is the one between Michael Owen and, and Alan Shearer mm. and again it comes Ooh. down but it, it comes down to those moments in a, in a manager's office where people come out with two very different versions of of what's gone on or rather similar versions but then there's a point yeah. at which they at which they, they split so, so th- that, that one was when they was going to get relegated wasn't it and Alan Shearer took over as manager so I think back end and- broad, broadly speaking they get to the end of, yeah. the, of the season one of Alan Shearer's coaching staff had a book out and said that Michael Owen had had a scan that showed up clear and they wanted yeah. him to play in order to help Newcastle stay in the in the Premier League they were old friends Shearer and Owen were, were old friends Michael Owen says that although the scan came back clear he knew his body he'd had lots of muscle injuries and that if he'd played he wouldn't have had a career after that mm. and says that he he said like I could give you x amount of time but I can't I yeah. can't do 90 minutes can you only use me if you need me yeah so Alan Shearer sees it as my old friend wouldn't help me out and Michael Owen sees it as somebody that I thought I could trust wanted me to put my yeah, body and the rest the of my career on the line yeah. you, can, you can see where the where the difference yeah. comes in that though can't yeah, you yeah I think that one I think that one gets a bit more emotional with attached because obviously Alan Shearer with Newcastle was desperate for him obviously to stay up in the Premier League uh, obviously his hometown club but I think that it comes down to the individual as well I mean he's, Alan and Michael have played for so long he, he must have known you get certain characters in football that you know will run through brick walls. Mm-hmm. You, they'll know that they'll have injections and this and that, and you haven't, you've only got to ask them once or not even ask them at all. They'll just go and do it. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's... You always get two you, opinions, you, won't you? You're going to have a two sides of the story yeah. always, See, but it's a shame that that's gone on for so long. I mean, I didn't even know that they had fallen out since that Yeah, that I thought time. they were friends, because it's all they about were, when Michael they, first they went. An, an agent to, and that kind of... They, but he stayed, yeah. at yeah. he, to, yeah. he stayed at his house when yeah. he went to Newcastle when he first signed, and to fall out like that, um, you always get two opinions. You'll always get a, play, a player's one, a manager's managers, especially Newcastle being so close to him. Yeah. He's probably thought yeah. that. He took that as personal, maybe. Mm. Whereas Michael, you, you can only take someone's word for it as well. So you've got to believe what Michael's saying that, you know, I wasn't right. I told you you need to come on. They took it as yeah, crosswise in some way, but two people taking it personally. And, you know. There's probably an element of truth in, the, yeah. in in all that was said. Like, you know, if he's saying that he was on a free at the end of the, at the, end of the year and he was looking for a move away and didn't want to harm his body, well, a lot of the players would, but 99% of the players would do that as well. You know, if there's a chance so have you, of them have you been up. in that that position? I mean, the Newcastle fans that like you were earning a reported one hundred twenty thousand pounds a week. Therefore, you should put your your body on the line, which is you, you can see where they're, they're coming from on that. But it depends. It, it all comes down yeah. to, to what the situation was. But if you've been in that situation where you've been asked to play and you know it would be harmful, that you yeah. know you you shouldn't. And so, what what would you do? I, I've always been, and, and again, it's just everyone's different and that mindset. If I could run. I could play, literally. If I if I if I couldn't get into a jog, then I'd be ruled out. Yeah. But, it, but I'd have injections in my ankles, in my feet. I remember last time on one of the shows, I have injection in my yeah. toes, um, having my knee strapped up. I remember having a a, a, a tear ligament at half time. Had my knee strapped up, went out and played second half because the gaff, says this because the gaff, footballers when they talk about injuries, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're on about when you last time like. The amount of things you could say you've gone yeah. through. Oh, yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It is, but again, it just comes down to individual. I know individuals as well that if they, yeah. if they're 
got the, the most minute injury that no, not, I'm not fit yeah. to play. I'm not 100%. I'm not going to play. I'm not going to put my body through it because anything else could come through that. And you've got to, you've just got to accept that. Well, there's, other, there's other players that will come off with an injury. You know they're not injured. They just don't fancy the game. Then they train on Monday. That used to frust- that can frustrate managers. Who yeah. did but, that? <laughs> So you, there was just here at Stoke that would that would that would come off and then train and then be fit for the next game. Like you do your powers of deduction to realise there was a few, wasn't there? You know, there was people that came off on a Saturday with a hamstring and then it'd be like if you do a hamstring, you do a hamstring. Yeah. You can't train on the Monday. No. Um but yeah, like you say you I had one where I had a fractured clavicle. I had a fractured end of my shoulder and uh I was having local anesthetics to play every game. Yeah. Someone did that to me and pulled my arm or even touched my hand. I was in agony all week. I'd train on Friday like that, trying to do set pieces. Yeah. I'd have an injection to play and then I was fine. Then I was in yeah. agony and that went on for months. So what, what's the long-term effect of something like that on you? I'll tell you when I'm... I'll tell you <laughs> in 10 <laughs> years' time. <laughs> don't know. It's also been a very public sort of spat now because although Alan Shearer didn't say anything about it, one of his coaching staff did, did describe the incident and then Michael, Michael Owen comes out and he's... A, he sort of said on, on Twitter, I'm a bit worried about how this came out because it's just coming out in quotable expert, yeah. quotable expert excerpts. And you're like, well, yeah, that's that's how they sell the book. <laughs> that's how you they're not it, gonna go, it? Yeah. it doesn't matter if you pay for it or that's how they promote the book, isn't that, it? That's what, that's what they do. So it, it's sort of, although he seems to be uncomfortable with the way that, it, that it's happened, that that is just what happened. Have you ever been at the centre of one of those... We know you. I've had one this week. No, but you can get hold incidents. of someone's number if you want. Yeah. You can get hold of someone's number if you wanted to. If you wanted to speak privately, now I'm not saying that's happened to sell the book more, but it's helped this week. I'm having a little spat to sell the book. Yeah, I'm not saying that's a reason why, but it's obviously helped. So the publishers will be happy with that. But you can get hold of someone's number if you want. Um, if you wanted to to make up, I'm sure they have each other's number. But I think top level. They were two very, very top level players. Sometimes you bring egos into it, whether they want to be the first one to do it. Go back to Roy. I'm the one that approached him in the Island Camp when he first came in. It had to be done. There's another one that Roy in WhatsApp, when all the Stephen Ward WhatsApp came out, I'm the one that approached that. No interest. It's, it's you got to take yourself out of it. And if you want to make, make up for it and you want to put your ego to a side, I don't hold grudges ever. Yeah. Ever hold grudges against people. I've been at clubs where. At Stoke, where every year they're bringing players in to, to sign players over me. And I was doing really well. And I was top scorer, Premier League club at the time. Um, Premier League top scorer. I was playing right midfield, scoring goals each year. Not book of fools, but playing every game, playing through injuries, playing everything. It came round to a contract. They were like, mm, we don't really want to speak to you yet. Come back to us after Christmas or come back to us in March or come back to us in the summer but everyone else was getting contracts and I thought that lad's not even playing mm. and I was one of the lowest earners at Stoke because I knew what everyone else was we were signing big players so I was like hang on a minute I'm playing through injuries and playing well scoring goals which is which is the main thing in a football club yet you don't want to offer me a contract so it got to the word like well I have to go and I nearly went to another team and eventually I signed a new contract and then the chief executive said, and I got on with him well, the chief executive said, look, it was just business. And I was like, no, I understand that. Don't hold grudge whatsoever. And then when I left the club, I didn't want to leave Stoke. I wanted to stay there. I would have stayed there my whole career. I absolutely loved it. They're a great club. But they just didn't want to add a year left at Stoke and I could go to a club and they were happy for me to go. And I, I could get two years somewhere else. And at some point you've got to think of your family and think, well, in that year, and what happened to me at the end of Burnley, I got injured at a had a career end injury that could have happened in a year as at Stoke and then you've got an extra year to you've got to think about the future but I don't hold grudges I understand football's a business and that's just the yeah. way it goes and, and the longer it goes on the harder it is isn't it mm. now, if that would, if they would have seen each other not long after that and then just had it out and it may be a bit different story yeah, maybe when you're in, in a dressing room with somebody and you have to see them every day then yeah. that's when these things exactly. get resolved because they'll they either come to a head yeah. or, kind of, or they get sorted out yeah um, in the middle of an international break, so it's given everyone something to talk about, well, which is always has. quite nice. What about from a, a playing point of view? Because often, you know, people who have sort of got these these strong affiliations with their club, those it depends on depends on which club, I suppose, you support. But some of the fans really, really don't like them. <laughs> they're sort of they're itching for the, the the club football to come up, the Premier League football to come back. Of course, the League One, League Two still playing. Yeah, the international one just 
You used to like hard. internationals because you got time off. Well, yeah, it's, 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 it's one of them. The ones that went on international duty, they're a victim of their own success. And listen, I would have given anything to have paid for my country. I represented under twenty one level, which was which was was great. Wasn't good enough to make obviously the full squad throughout my career. So the ones that have gone on to do it, take my hat off to them. Brilliant. Um, but the ones that don't get selected and stay behind, it's great. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it is what, great. So what's it like, man? The so there's, there's hardly anybody there. There's hardly anybody there, and obviously. The, the bigger clubs you go to so I remember when I was at Chelsea you can imagine everyone was an international so everyone was just out of the building <laughs> literally three you left yeah it was and so you'd either go down and step down with obviously the reserve team or the kids just for a couple of days and, and you had a, the majority of time off so you'd have the, the, the following weekend which was obviously when the international games were that was a banker so you'd always have the Saturday Sunday then mm. it would either filter through on the fr- the Friday on the Thursday because as well you've got to look at it the, the ones that are, are that are left some of them obviously foreign lads as well they need to go and see their families mm. back home so mentally as well it's nice to just recharge the batteries but I mean I don't know how I the- was the opposite so we we play on the Saturday we fly on the Sunday straight to say Dublin wherever it was an away game a home game you fly to Dublin to travel anyway mm. so you realise you're away for 10 days, Ten days, sometimes 11, because you go on a Sunday, probably back the next Wednesday or Thursday. So you fly immediately, you're tired, shattered after the game. You meet up, you're in training. You have a different training thing as well. So, But you're in a hotel, so people think you go away internationals and it's great. You're in a hotel floor. Um, in a room, basically, <laughs> you're stuck or, there. Or you're in reception drinking beer out of or, teacups. Or <laughs> no, but you're stuck unless you get a night out. I'm you... not having this. I mean, you've told so many stories about your trips away on the Republic of Ireland. No. And now you're saying yeah, I mean, it's really, that was it's the really that was hard to be away. Well, there's, an, actually, there's actually a story for the Ireland camp as well, where there was the, 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 trying to get the doctor to give them sleeping tablets because it was that boring. They were trying to take sleeping tablets. <laughs> <laughs> lads were always on sleep. I never took sleeping tablets. Lads were on sleeping tablets. But to pass the hours. That, that was the beginning of towards the end yeah. it was different but you're on a hotel floor you're with the security guards now you train you're back at the hotel you're not allowed out the hotel you're stuck there you play a game you might travel four five six hours to play a game you're back and then you come back to the club say on the Thursday you're playing on a Saturday you've had no sleep because you probably played Tuesday or Wednesday night you get three or four hours sleep they want you straight in you're training and you're thinking you've had no days off for two no. weeks you're shattered and you come back in, you think, oh, but then the managers don't look after you. They don't say, oh, you can have an extra day, but they promise to. Yeah. But it never comes back to you. Can have a, you can have a day off or anything. So it, it's difficult because as a, as a player, they say players moan. You don't get a weekend. You say, I've got three kids, so you don't get any Saturdays or Sundays with your kids because you're training. I miss all the birthdays. Don't have a Christmas. Don't get a summer holidays because they break up in July and I go back to pre-season first week in July. It's tough as a player. Yeah, you don't, you don't realise. You, that's what you signed up you, for. You sacrificed that. Parcel. But as that. an international, that's difficult being away. But but when you're not, it's great. <laughs> so you are literally, you are booking flights up. People are going, I, but, I mean, that weekend, I know people that's gone to Ibiza, Dubai, Dubai yeah. Barcelona, yeah, you stable, name it. it? Everyone's going everywhere. And there's one as well in March, isn't there, that always falls on the Dubai races. <laughs> and there's literally just <laughs> footballers central out in Dubai in, in September, March. October, if November. They those, September, if they move yeah. those internationals, they'd be a Right. Yeah. <laughs> September, October, November, a lot lads are away. Yeah. So there's one so lads will just be coming back now to the clubs right now. Yeah. And they'll have a good weekend. Oh, yeah. And then and then they got they're like, Well, I got three or four weeks, we've got another yeah. international break. Yeah. Would up. they tell you about what they've been up to yeah, while you've been off playing? Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. You get yeah. the WhatsApp groups, you get pictures getting sent into the groups, <laughs> everyone on it, and you think, ah. Oh. But yeah. I'd swap it. I'll never swap it though. No, never swap and, it. and also you have told us about your times with the, with the Republic of Ireland. I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> I think this is a little bit end. of revisionism here. I think this is a little bit. Of, it was. It was so hard it's, when really it was just sitting around drinking cups. Best time cups. of life, though. Best yeah. time of life. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you if when you when you were the players left behind at the club, there's only there's only a few of you. You've got people yeah. who are going away and stuff. But if you go in, well, what what do you do? So you train with like the the reserves with the kids yeah so that, that, that's, that's at the top clubs the majority you've still got a, enough of you that can train yeah. half a dozen eight maybe I don't know sometimes ten uh, they might bring obviously some of the young young kids up with you and you'll have it'll just be sort of not down tools but it'll just be a low level training you know yeah. there's no there's nothing tactical that you can do because you know there's no game so it'll just it'll be fun based really just to sort of tick the week along and then you might have a hard day on the Thursday or the Wednesday the day before you've got the days off 
as a sort of blow the cobwebs out and then that's it away you go a, so lot, of manager, a lot of managers go away that's well. what I was going to say where's oh, the manager right. oh, the at this stage the managers love the international break yeah. <laughs> some of them don't even come in for the week they just put the coaches in yeah. for, for a week <laughs> yeah, so yes. they can go away and it's yeah. fair enough you're the manager yeah. you do what you want yeah yeah, some of them go away. I don't think I've, I don't think anyone's been. A, no, actually, there. I think a few of the lads have actually gone away, and the gaffer's been in the same hotel. On the flight is the worst one, isn't it? On the flight. <laughs> oh, I've not done I know a few lads have been yeah. on the flight, and the manager's been on there. Yeah, but but in saying that as well, on the flip side to that, you can't blame them because if you think of the partner of the manager, mm. they must never see them. Their, their husband obviously because it, it managed, 24 7 say that like it's yeah. a bad thing no but yeah, exactly. <laughs> Some of them quite so their yeah, wives yeah. must say look can we yeah. go away but they must obviously tell it as well with going somewhere where they can watch probably go and watch an, an international game and yeah. slip off while their partner's around the pool and we, yeah. we, we had one where we went on an international and uh, we played Austria and we played against someone else so he was playing left wing and I was doing the usual I was right into him in the game like I was pinching stamping elbowing off the ball and Seamus, me and Seamus Coleman tag teamed on him it was only him and in the end he hated he didn't we had a really good game against this is when head. he was at Stoke as well no this before he came to ah. Stoke and then he signed for Stoke the week later <laughs> 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 so we were going so I was, when I found out we signed I was like oh no I've just been giving it him big time yeah. last couple of weeks we've played them maybe once and it was literally a week or two later we signed them but he came in laughing and Mark, I love Marco I got yeah, on with him really lad. well he came in just laughing he and probably thought thank god he's on my team yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but then I played him I played him again when I was at Stoke against Osher just did the same thing again yeah. <laughs> played through against him but it's a funny one that yeah. when you go away and you know when you're playing against yeah. one but, um, was there any ever anyone in, in the Ireland squad that you had fallen out with like it, maybe like you no, played against each other in the in the. No, I just no. said I don't hold grudge. When you're on the pitch, you're on the pitch. I'll never fall out. Um, with Had they fallen out if, with you? <laughs> no, I don't even think that. I don't know any managers, I think. I was just just but, the way you're describing your game. I was just thinking there might, there might be I a think, few players turning up if yeah, they played yeah. you the weekend before. Going, well, no, still I've got never bruises fell out down players. here now. It's just yeah. you give a right smile if, if you come against someone, and mm. everyone sort of knows. Um, but no, never never fell out with a player on a pitch. I don't think. You um did have the Republic of Ireland to beat Switzerland as your Paddy Power bet oh, yep. for Again. winning for winning the challenge last week but it was a one-all draw um, the odds the latest Paddy Power odds for the Euro 2020 winner France 7-2 England 9-2 Belgium 6-1 Germany 7-1 Spain 15-2 Netherlands 8 Ireland 150-1 get your money on Ireland <laughs> but England England you know 9-2 second favourites France oh, favourites got a chance. France. No, we've we got play, a chance. Yeah, Eng- yeah, England. You never know. You uh, never they know they done well at the World Cup. Obviously, the the last one round. The thing is that the stats are ridiculous. I remember Dan Ashworth come in. Obviously, he's at, at Reading. Yeah. Uh, sorry, at, at Brighton, yeah. <clears throat> and um, he put this uh, this piece up on the board, and it was like what. England do they're, they're the best at qualifying at all age groups but then when they come to the major tournament when it comes to quali- uh, into the tournaments they're the worst mm. so there's there's something wrong with the mindset or the mentality or there's something not right there mm. but hopefully that mould now is breaking because because of the World Cup yeah. well, France won the World Cup and we played them um, just before I think and they were something else and they we, we played them in a friendly um, and Declan Rice played for us <laughs> Oh, is that uh, one of yeah. those ones? Uh, <laughs> one, in, of uh, no, one of the no, two. One of the two. Remember, yeah. like, yeah. I, I'm a, they were they were frightening. And Mbappe, I've never known anything. The pace of him yeah. was. I've never seen it. Never seen a player as quick as him. Came up against players as quick as him. We had players that weren't slow in the team. No players are slow nowadays. We have players that are quick, and he had ten yards on them. And by the time he over a fifty yard sprint, he was ten yards past them. Yeah, unbelievable. Top player. So another losing bet for the Republic of Ireland three against Switzerland. Yeah. We haven't well, three in a row. It's not been one yet. There's not been a bet won. This is the time it can all change. It is the moment you've been waiting for. It is the Paddy Power Challenge. You will get the chance to win two hundred and fifty pounds for the charity of your choice, plus a two hundred and fifty pound bet with Paddy Power. Um, we asked John and Steve to see if they could guess the identities of some mystery footballers. This week's Paddy Power Challenge is a football phone in with a twist. We've got. Anonymous footballers on the line and the guys have to guess which footballer it is by asking a series of questions. However, just to put a little bit of danger into it, 
they're not going to be using their own voices. So it might be somebody you know well, <laughs> but you don't necessarily recognise their phone uh, voice. Have you put on a voice? <laughs> I think when you hear them, you'll realise that yes, <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> what we'll do is, Steve, you can ask the first question. Okay. You can keep asking questions until the answer is no, at which point John will take over. You're allowed three guesses for each person each. Right. After that, you're out of the round. The person to get okay. the most correct footballers is the winner. Is that clear? Let's get it on. Clearish. Yeah. Let's go, yeah. It will become clear when we start playing it anyway. Footballer, are you there? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> right, the guys may have some questions for you. <laughs> go on. Do you want to ask? Is it me first? I'll name that tune in one. Is it me? <laughs> yes. Are you a current player? No. Oh. Oh. Over to you. Oh. Have I played with you? Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> Have I played with you? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and you don't recognise him. Um, You'll go again. Was it at a London club? Yeah. <laughs> was it at Fulham? Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, do you live in London? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. So he's played at you at Fulham. Doesn't live in London. He might live outside London. Well, if he doesn't live in London, chances are yeah. he doesn't it's live outside, outside London. Outside London. <laughs> um, are you over six foot? Yeah. Have you got a baldy head? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have a guess. Go on, you have three guesses. So. Bobby Zamora. Oh, that way! Johnny, I didn't know whether the game the other day he counted as me playing with you either. That's what I thought, that's what I thought. <laughs> that's why you had a little wobble. And you, hey, best, best run two you've had there, best partnership you've had. Hey. That's, yeah. emba that's embarrassing when a mate doesn't recognise you. That's your mate as well. No, yeah, I, I thought he'd get me straight away. I, I'm always messing about on the phone with him as well. So yeah, that's poor from me. That's poor from me. Well done, Bobs. Cheers, mate. Cheers, Bob. Cheers, boy. Thank you. Bye, 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 Bobby. Thank you. Hello, footballer. Are you there? Yes. Right, the boys have some questions for you, starting with John. Have I played with you? Yes. Did I play with you at Stoke? No. <laughs> 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 Do you play for a national team? Yes. Is that national team Ireland? Yes. Are you a current player? No. Sounds like Mrs. Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been retired for more than two years? No. <sighs> Have you played in the Premier League? Yes. Did you play for a London club? No. Do you like playing on computers? <laughs> Oh, David no. Myler. David Myler. Oh, no. Yes. It is David Myler. It is. That is yeah. exactly who it is. Listen, David, yeah. thank you very much. Right, go on. I'll see you later. See you later. Bye. 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 <laughs> Hello, footballer. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> Hello, footballer. Uh, the boys would like to ask you some questions. First up, Steve said, well. Are you a uh, retired player? Yeah. Did you play in the Premier League? Yeah. Are you a striker? No. Are you a centre half? No. Are you a midfield player? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you won the Premier League? Yeah. Did you wear red? No. Have you played with Steve? Yeah. Did well, you play for Chelsea? Yeah. Oh. oh no. Are you known for your skills? Depends. <laughs> Depends all. Oh. Think I think I think he's been yeah, I think that's true. Is it Joe Cole? No. I'll try for a guess. Is it Sean Wright Phillips? Yeah. I think you're you're coming in to see us, aren't you, Sean, at some stage before you head back yes, to the Yes, I States? will be. Yeah, we'll be at some point. Look forward to it. Thanks very much. No problem. Take care. Bye. Bye. Hello, footballer. Hello. And is it your turn to see? We'll give Steve a go. Mugs away. Is it me? Uh, fo 
footballer, are you a current player? Yes. Do you play in the WSL? Yes. I know him. Do you play in a blue kit? Yes. I'm gonna guess. Is this Laura Rafferty? Yeah! yeah. <laughs> What's going on? Well, congratulations and good luck for the rest of the game. Good. Speedy Cheers. recovery. Thank you very much, Laura. Hello, mystery footballer. Hello, how are you? <laughs> I'm very well, but the boys are the ones who have questions for you. Disguise the voice. They need to disguise the voice. Do you recognise his no, voice? No, I don't. I'm just saying disguise the voice. But mystery footballer, if you could be a little bit more mysterious, that would be amazing. <laughs> Wow, I'm looking forward to this. Here we go then. Go on then. John, first question. <laughs> <laughs> Have you played with Steve? Um, no. My question. Yeah? I'm going to go straight in. <sighs> go on. Is it Ray Parler? <gasps> oh, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> go on. <laughs> yeah. This is it. Oh, listen, Ray. Steve, you've, you've, you've allowed Steve to win the challenge. Well done, Steve. Top uh, sorry, man, Ray. Ray. Well done, Steve. Top Cheers, man, Ray. Ray. Cheers, Ray. Tell you, what, when, you, you did when like, I said to you, I, do you recognise that voice? You did. Gospel truth. I didn't get it from that, but when when John answered the first asked the first question yeah. and he replied, I knew it was him. You can't hide that yeah. voice, can you? He is entertaining. Maybe he needs to work on his acting a little bit. The wrong for Pele. <laughs> yeah. Just made you win it, hasn't he? Three two. Yeah. You've got a two hundred and fifty pound bet with Paddy Power. What do you want to put it on? I am going to go for Leicester mm -hmm. at Manchester United, okay. and they are four to one. So I think that's Ooh. good. I think that's good Ooh. odds. What's your charity? I'm going to go, uh, the charity I want to go for is Abby's Fund, which uh, helps with bereavement for baby loss. This is Liquid Football on Joe, together with Paddy Power. I'm Kelly Cates, alongside me John Walters and Steve Sidwell. Last week's House of Rugby had a football theme because James Haskell and Alex Payne were joined by the Beast. Ayoak and Fenwell went in to talk to them. Uh, James told the story of his most embarrassing moment on the rugby field. I got a little beautiful little ball off, off Ben Young and I was running right, and, and I looked up and there was uh, Cuthbert, who's a guy who plays for Wales, and there was uh, Lee Halfpenny. Cuthbert's a big unit, right? Yeah. And I saw them and I, and I thought, I'll, I'll run into Halfpenny because there wasn't a lot of space. So I ran into Halfpenny, hit, and I spanned. But I spanned straight into the post. I didn't see it into the post covers. And everyone's like, ah, you wanker. I almost broke my neck, right? I ran into it, <laughs> compressed myself. I was like, Hurr! right? And then I lay down and put the ball back, got it back, and obviously... I'll be mugged off. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. now, in the world of social media, yeah. I get people messaging me all the time. Go, ha! Ah, did you see this? I was like, yeah, I did. You dickhead. It's me <laughs> running the fucking post. Well, you can see more of James Haskell and Alex Payne's chat with Bayrak and Fenwa on House of Rugby. You can watch it on YouTube, or you can download it from your usual podcast provider. And remember to check out Joe's other shows, Swanee's Cricket Show, and TKO with Carl Frampton. Now. We have had the first Premier League managerial sacking of the season. It's early days, but it's a hangover, really, from, yeah, from last season. And Javi Gracia has <clears> gone <throat> from Watford. Kike Sanchez Flores is back. Have you ever had that two managers where one's come back in? I've not had one where one's come back in. I've, had a lot, I've, been, at, I've been at a lot of clubs where the manager's gone, mm. been no, fired and sacked. How do, you, how do you normally find out? I mean, do they come in and tell you and that's the first you hear of it or do the rumours go Sometimes around? Sometimes it happens in the summer, doesn't it? So yeah. when it's happened, when I think I've been there, it's happened in the summer, so you're not in the club anyway. Um, I don't think I've the been The hardest in. one that I had, and I don't, I, I, it was at Chelsea when Jose left, and he'd obviously been there three years. They'd obviously won the league twice. They'd just missed out on the league um, the last season. We started the season, pre-season, and then he left, I think, in September, October. So a lot of the players had been with him for a long time and it was a real family culture and we played Rosenberg in the Champions League we drew or lost at home and then we got called in the next day and we was all in and then we knew that something wasn't right and Jose got sacked that day so how so what happened then you you got called in did you got called in for something or did you think you were going in for I, training I think, or it, I think got... it was penciled in that we was going to be off right, and okay. then it obviously we the result didn't work out we was in no one knew what was going on. Mm. Uh, and then we we was all downstairs in the dressing room. And uh, obviously at that time, there was the meeting was going on upstairs and it sort of filtered down that Jose was going to go. So we all had to go, stay down in the dressing room and he come down. And um, I got, I'd, I'd only been there a couple of months. Mm. And he come round and he, he was going around one by one saying his goodbyes. There was people crying. Drogba was in absolute pieces, oh like God. tears. 
tears. And you get the opposite, won't you? You get some people that are quite happy that he went. No? Yeah, but do, do you know what? I think looking around, I think everyone was was taken yeah. was taken back by it. I mean, it, it, there's been loads where when where some goes, then yeah, it's half, yeah, half are happy, half, half yeah. are not. But on that one, that one occasion, he went round and he went to around to every individual, um, and I think everyone was was sort of was broken by it. So that was one of the hardest ones. But you, the majority of the time, you just find out at home on yeah. on TV or. And as you said, half well, a happy, half unhappy. And yeah. it'll come up like it's a yeah. little news yeah. ticker, yeah. and yeah. you're yeah. probably the captain of the club might know. Yeah, yeah. The whispers go around before players. saying yeah. This yeah. Is, we've only got one game or two games left. Or manager might ring around a few maybe and say, yeah, and say this is what's happening. But yeah, generally it's on it's on t- same with signing it's on TV. So a manager might out. might say to like a group of his trusted players, look. This this is possibly this is my last throw of the even managers now. don't really know that to the last minute and they just get pulled in, don't they? A lot of them have the back in the week before, and then they'll probably get a call. Can you come in with the board? Yeah, and just get there. But it's done short and sharp. Back. There's no, there's no. I mean, the, the Jose one was goodbye. As normally, you find out when you're away from the training ground or the, the game, and then the next time you go in, that manager's gone. Yeah. You, you, uh, you, nine times out of ten, you phone them after and just say, "Look, Gaffer, thanks ever so much for the last few years. It's a shame." Obviously, you might speak to them. Yeah, I've not, I've not had many where where, where they've been sacked. But nine times out of ten, they're probably Pulis. thinking, "You bastard, you've got me the sack." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think, I think but, I've but only there had will be Tony players Pulis. that they will feel that. Yeah, hundred percent. You have half and half. You have the lads that aren't playing, always happy, and and improve ten to twenty percent when a manager goes for a month and then yeah. drop back down. Mm. And you have the lads that you know. Like Tony Pulis was with me, he brought me into the club. We got to the Europa League. I think we were sixth at Christmas time in the league, and then we just had a bad second half to the season. And we were still in the Europa League. Got did really well. Got beat by Valencia, and then it just affected the. And it was just I think the writing was on the wall. He was going to go. He went. Um, I don't think I spoke to him immediately, but I spoke to him since. Like I'll speak to you. He ring up asking about players, or um, you'll send the odd text, but. Football's a funny, funny old world of ex-players and, and managers. You're almost like ships passing in the night where you don't really hear from a lot of no. people. You'll have a few close friends, but you don't really hear from a from a lot of of a lot of ex-players or ex-managers. Even when it, here's one for you. Even yeah. when you bump into the, all the managers that you've played under, do you do you call them by their first name or do you do you call them gaffer? No first name. Oh dear. Yeah. See, I, I call them I call them boss or gaffer. Yeah. It's bit, and that could be, that could be. Like meeting a teacher. Yeah. 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 That, could, that could be yeah. in a totally yeah. different environment. I could see yeah. him out shopping in wherever and yeah. I could go, all right, gaffer. Yeah. And he, he could be one of my first managers that I played under. Yeah. But for some reason, they're always going to be mean, boss yeah. or gaffer. I think, I think under Pulis, I might have done that for a while, but everyone else I just saw. But as I said, I never hold grudges and I might have left because they weren't playing me and I wanted to go. Yeah. But I'll always see them and be like, I'll always get on with with everyone yeah. really. But like, even, when I, even when I retired, there's not many, even the club I was at, no one said all the best see you later it was just I was gone that was it it's just, it's strange just one, cold yeah. just, just cold but and you don't really hear from a lot it's exactly the same when the roles reversed and the player leaves you know you go, we go on about loyalty and players kissing the badge and then leaving the next minute and same thing we had it before about WhatsApp groups and they're cut off and but you know this, when, the, when the club want a player out it's the same thing as the club want a manager yeah. out well, you know, what about if because you hear about this but it'd be interesting to hear it from a, a player's perspective yeah. rather than from like an outsider's perspective. Yeah. What about players who try to get a manager out? Have you ever come across that? Or at least the ones who are, who are unhappy it might just not be as helpful as there they will, could there be. There will be players that have the chief executives or the director of footballs here yeah. at clubs. 100%. Um, it's the biggest thing in football now, the squads, I think. Yeah. You've, got, you've got 11 players and you can only keep so many happy. And the ones that aren't, aren't, who aren't happy are the ones that can cause problems. If you can keep everyone happy and keep everyone as a team, because the ones start a few whispers, it drags that person in, drags, and suddenly it's a problem. And mm. then if they get there, anyone else's ear. If, st- if things aren't going well at the club, unless you're in one of the top clubs, things generally aren't going well. There's times when yeah. you're down a season... That's when they'll they might throw a word in or they might say something. I'm just trying to think of at clubs. Uh, I've never had a really bad group at clubs where it's been. I've know. not been there where an individual's been like vendetta against getting a manager out. It I've must had, happen though. Yeah, yes. yeah, of course it does. And what what would probably happen is the player depends on the relationship with either the ball directors or the chief exec or even the owner 
could go direct to him to say, look, I'm all for this football club. I want this to be a success, but as long as this man's in charge, it's not going to be. It depends how that player is playing. Obviously, if he's one out of the squad, then you know they won't, probably won't listen to it. But I've had I've had before where someone from the board or a director or an owner has called me to say, "What's the mood like in the camp?" Which yeah, again, I think they is want sort to of treading because... t- stone to sort of yeah. say, you know, do you, do you are the lads yes. responding to the manager? I've had that. Because... Yeah, I've had that. Do you think it's because you're going to tell them what they want to hear or confirm what they already think? Or do they think it's because, like in in your individual case, was it because you had a balanced view and you weren't going to represent one or other of the... If you were a manager of a club and there was no link between you and the board, say a director of football, or Mm. even a link guy that knows the board yet knows the players and knows the mood of the camp and you were struggling, you're not going to tell the board the chief executive, the chairman, how bad it is. They might get an inkling of just being around the place and we'll be like, right, who's a senior pro? Who can I trust? Who's not going to have, you know, a personal issue and think, oh, they just want to get the manager out and they'll probably go to them and say, what's happening? Or how's the team? How's the squad looking? And yeah. then, and you know, sometimes a lad, like a lad will come to me and say, chief executive rang me last night mm-hmm. and you're thinking, oh, something's happening here and you think yeah. there's something going on behind the scenes and it might not happen for a month it might not happen for two months but then something happens and then as I said that's the biggest thing keeping the 25 man squad mm. happy and it's, it's yeah. difficult and once the board start looking at a manager is there any way back really or are they just waiting for that I that next bad run yeah I, I, I think they're always looking I think I think when there's a bad a club are going through a bad period I don't think the cl- the board aren't doing their job of their thinking right. If we win and lose the next five games, yeah. you've, got, you've got to think, and you'll always have people in mind, and people always have how they want to go down a route as a club. But when you're on a bad run, I think people start talking, and it gets put on the back burner, doesn't it? Yes. I remember once when at Fulham, where Mark Hughes was under big pressure, and I don't think he was the first choice for him to go there anyway. And we played Stoke, and we won two nil. Do you remember we wore the green kit? Chris Baird scored at Stoke, at Chris Stoke. Baird scored, yeah. yeah, just I before was Christmas. Them down and they scored, yeah, I think it I was one it of them down. cases that come out after was if they'd have lost that game, yes, he would have been gone. I've heard of that a few times as yeah. well. Yeah. yeah, but but they won. Then we won the next one, then the next one, and it went on. And in the end, he lasted to the end of the season, mm-hmm. and we I think got into Europe maybe eighth place or through the fair play. But then in the summer, That's Martin it. got sacked, and Martin Yole come in, so. I think it does prolong once that that seed is is planted. Yeah. I don't think many probably would overturn Just it or win it back. back. But I think clubs as well have got to make a change at some point. So I think you've got. To, I was at Ipswich last year, and I think they left it too late to make the change. Um, and didn't do any better after they changed the manager. I think he had a worse record than one, but he left it too late, and it, it all went wrong. And I think the I think at some point they they once again going back to a business point of view, it's a business, although. All the fans and the players, everyone, it, you know, it's such a tight knit community. It's still a business. So, but the, if you're playing for a manager who's you kind of known to be on borrowed time, you must all be talking about it as as players. It must be. You might want that manager to stay. Hard and to, not stay hard you to give your own to give everything, but the uncertainty of it. Yeah. Just kind of not knowing what's what's coming. And thinking, well, we're training this week, but we've got the game coming up, and we don't even know if it's going to be. That's is when you get, be here at that's, the end that is when you get stuck in a rut and then the relegation just sort of dooms a bit closer and closer and you just can't seem to get out of it because they say, right, well, we need to go back to basics. You have these meetings, right, we need to go back to basics, boys. We need to do this. And you do that in training, but there's still obviously the uncertainty as if, well, if we don't win on a Saturday, then the gaffer's going to go. Yeah. You don't win Saturday, the gaffer's still there. This, you're just waiting for it to be confirmed as well. So I, I, I never got when people say, oh, they've lost the players. They're not trying on the pitch because whenever I, when I went out on the pitch, regardless or not the situation you're in with the club or the manager or anything else you give nothing less than a normal game and I never really understood where from the outside or pundits or anyone would say oh yeah they've lost the players they're not trying today it's like no So Watford have sorted out their managerial situation in 31 minutes as we said Um, one club still looking for a manager into Miami uh, set up by David Beckham of course later starts for their first manager the 13-8 to favourite is Carlo Ancelotti with Paddy Power 11-4 to for David Moyes that's been going around a while that rumour with David Moyes to into Miami You've got any badges Steve haven't you? No? That my, would be my, brother's, my brother's already coaching in Miami. I'm going to put his name <laughs> yeah, forward. Thierry Henry at five to one. I'm not. I'm not sure. Carlo Ancelotti, David Moyes, Thierry Henry. I'm not sure if he he's put got, himself in that bracket just yet. Got but. a good relationship with Ancel- uh, Ancelotti, isn't he? Yeah, David Beckham. But also, 
Messi could possibly leave on a free coming into the season. Oh, you're throwing mm. a little uh, rumour out there. Well, I'm just saying. Have you, have you, is that from anywhere or have you just... No, I'm just saying, Messi could oh, possibly leave. That, that's there, that's from Messi somewhere. Could, that looks... it's, listen, it's an Adidas club, Adidas league, Adidas player. They'll pay big money. Big, that, big money just, where, where, where did that come from? I sound oh, like I'm party though. Do you know what? Sometimes, what? sometimes yeah. when someone throws something out there, there's nothing yeah. at all. No, no, I'm going to say the opposite. Yeah. Like someone, someone, Wayne Rooney went to Derby, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Someone said it to me. He could have went to, well, before he went to Derby, he was going to come back in January and go to Man U. Yeah. But it was someone in the know. Well, there obviously wasn't so, in the know. <laughs> But there must have been something there for no. him to say it. So for you to say I, that, there's something there. That's no, what I'm I just, I, I think there was, <laughs> there was just on one. There, <laughs> was, there was something released the other day, wasn't there? About Messi could can can leave in the season on a free. And someone, I think it was one of the players. Was it PK? Someone said he's got the, he's, he's earned the right to do whatever he wants. If he wants to leave, let him, you know he can do that. So I'm just throwing it out there. Um, talking about new players in the NFL, can we did get you a, see? Can we get a bit? Can we get some more <laughs> power get, for that? <laughs> we'll flash. We'll try and flash them up on the on the YouTube. Um, in the NFL, did you hear this? The, the wide receiver Antonio Brown left the Oakland Raiders before he'd played a single game. <laughs> he went in, apparently had rows with all the management with his teammates, and then rejoined the New England Patriots. So he's oh he's no he's gone. Sorry, he's joined the New England Patriots. Left left the Oakland Raiders, gone to the New England Patriots. So. I mean, he's, he's fallen on his feet. That's happened in football, that, that though. Yeah. But there's, there's one thing if there's a change in, in circumstances. And you're like, do you know what, this one yeah. can't go through. But this one, just to go in and just go, do you know what, day one, I don't, I don't really like just anyone here. Well, <laughs> yeah. relentless. I quite there's, like there's, the idea of it, though. I just think, nah, no. Early on, just go, this is not for me. doesn't work out at clubs, yeah. isn't it? We had that at Fulham. In January, uh, relegation battle, we needed a striker. So they went and got... Costas, I think Matroglu, I think his name was, yeah. played in Champions League. Yeah. Uh, big, big striker. This fucker, he, <laughs> he did not stop eating. Honestly, he did. I'm telling you now, he did He's not stop lad. eating. He was a big boy. And you know, like the protein bars, every time you see him, he'd be walking around the training ground with the fucking protein bar. <laughs> <laughs> we, have, we have Mario jo- Mario Yardell. Do you remember him? Mario Yardell yeah. won the golden boot in Europe. I think he was champion, top scorer. Whatever he played in European competition, he came to Bolton. You know, Sam Allardyce used to sign players that were like, not over the hill, but used to get like Campo, Herrero, JJ yeah, Cotter, yeah. Jorke. Have you signed this? Brazilian. Mario Yardell, yeah. right? And he came. You want to see the gut? On him. He had like he had a proper gut big on him, big one, yeah. exactly that. You should have seen him finishing. He was like toe poking it from thirty yards, top corner. Unbelievable. Did he play? No, not really. He played yeah. just strange well, with the same reserves and stuff. He, I mean, yeah. he, he was. The, he, I think he was actually their record sign at the time. And he, he was might play. Awful. <laughs> you, he you've was got to get a there. picture of him. He had. A, he had. Oh, do you, I, do you know what he looks like? like? If I had to picture him now, he looks like one of the Targaryens from. Um, <laughs> You know uh, Game of Thrones? No, oh, I've not seen it. Oh, Game of Thrones, these big Targaryens with a big beard. And he was just an absolute <laughs> unit. But we were in a relegation battle. We were saying, you want all hands on deck, people that are going to go through brick walls. He was just like, just feet <laughs> up. That's, just that's eating, a classic eating. of like an agent <laughs> pulling a player into a club and putting them in. And, yeah. and people think, not listening from the manager or whatever happened and sometimes that happens doesn't it and bringing someone in that just doesn't fit the I just like the it. idea that this player's just gone round and he's maybe got a few clubs interested and he's just gone tested all the canteens just before he, before Pro, he gets um, there honestly <laughs> but, but you, can, um, you can picture it from all the lads even just walking down into the treatment room where obviously a lot of the banner <laughs> happens he just walks in you know like just the way people walk as well he's just flip flops just scuffing the floor and you're thinking this fuck it. I bet, I, he, before he comes in you're thinking I bet uh, he's got a protein bar in each, in each hand as well <laughs> you know what, no, we, we played with plenty of players like that that just don't round the training ground like flip flops don't yeah. care don't do any extra work I never I, I would never mind as long as he produced at the weekend would yep. never mind and players would never mind a player acting any way they want for me don't care as long as you produce on the weekend mm. and if you produce it's like you can act however you want and that's why I always got on with everyone at the club but if they don't every tiny thing they do oh, yeah. will get on your nerves just great <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, talking about getting on your nerves I think we've 
probably should end it there before we start it. <laughs> before we spend too much time together and start annoying each other. <laughs> You're joking. Um, <laughs> I thought that was quite funny. You both looked at me as if to say, You're getting oh, on the oh, oh, really hurt. Uh, that's the next it for this week's Liquid Football from Joe, together with Paddy Power. We're here every week. You can download the podcast or you can watch us on YouTube. Please leave us a nice review on your iTunes if you like what you hear. We've also got a Facebook page. If you search for Liquid Football, you can join the chat on that. And remember to check out our other shows, House of Rugby with James Haskell, TKO with Carl Frampton and Swanee's Cricket Show. We're back next week. Thank you very much for listening. You've been listening to Liquid Football on Joe, sponsored by Paddy Power.